Okay, so welcome everybody to the arranging plots chapter of the ggplot2 book club. Um, I'll be presenting this week and let me just share my screen. There to go. Are you all seeing that okay? All right. Um, how do I close? There we go. Ha ha. Okay. So today we're going to talk about arranging plots and just like networks um, from last week, this is another chapter that deals with a non ggplot package that is like the main method for um, for accomplishing something in ggplot. So as I was reading this, I was like, they should just have a section of this book separately that's like all the stuff that ggplot2 doesn't do natively that you use other packages for that we're going to cover because um, otherwise I think it's a little confusing. But this chapter goes over how to produce several subplots as part of the same main visualization. And um, specifically, it goes over how to handle plots that are more advanced than the facets that, that are created with facet wrap and facet grid. Um, and then also how to arrange um, plots both in rows and columns, and then also on top of each other, like one inset into the other. And trying to advanced slide. There we go. Um, yeah, okay, so if we need more than faceting, um, we'll discuss patchwork in this chapter. There are other packages that also do similar things like cowplot, which I've used in the past, grid extra. Um, I've sort of, no, I don't think I've ever used grid extra and, and ggpubber or however you pronounce that one. Um, I used at one point because I couldn't figure out how to get labels working like a b and c on different parts of the figure in patchwork so after reading this chapter i think i understand that a little bit better um as well and so we're not going to cover these the person who made the slides before me did include a little bit of extra information on calplot specifically but um, i'm not sure if we'll if um i feel qualified to go over that and the chapter focuses on patchwork okay so i included this code to actually generate the plots, um, not to go over the particulars of the code, but just to indicate, like, okay, we're dealing with this MPG data set, and let's pretend that we visualize this data in different ways. We've got different X and Y variables, different types of plots. We have some points, bar plot, density, um, summary, with the error bars. So here are um, the four plots that we're generating. And maybe we're writing a paper on this data set, and we'd like to put them together into a single figure. Um, so we use the plus operator in patchwork, which is a little confusing because you also use plus to add layers within a ggplot. Um, this tripped me up when it came to adding themes and stuff later on. So I'll, I'll highlight that again. But all we do is we do plot one object name plus plot two, um, which will by default arrange the plots in whatever the same default order is that you would get if you did like facet wrap. So the example they gave is if you do two plots next to each other, it will it will put them in the single row. Um, if you do like P1 plus P2 plus P3, it'll then wrap around to doing like, or actually I don't remember if it'll do a single row of three. Maybe it, it'll do a single row of three, but then if you yeah, have it's a single four, row of three. Okay. Yeah, so whatever the underlying algorithm is that decides that for facet wrap um, is the same algorithm here. You can also be more specific and you can use this like bar pipe operator to specify that you want these two to be in the same row. Um, so despite it saying same as, it'll it'll give the same result, but this is the plus is more general um, in terms of, yeah, how the plots are laid out. Um, yeah, okay, so here's what happens when you put all four of them together, it will arrange it by default into um, two rows and it's gonna do that row wise. So first, second, third, fourth, like that. Um, we obviously might wanna control this layout. So if we have three plots where by default, they would all go in one row, we might wanna wrap that around um, and specify two columns. So we do that by adding plus plot layout. Um, there's other ways to do this as well. We saw the pipe operator to specify that we want something that we want them in the same row. We can also use the slash or like division operator um, to 
specify that we want them in the same column. For a minute, that was hard for me to remember. And then I was like, okay, let me just think of it as fractions with a numerator and a denominator. Um, so I think that's like a good little memory trick for that. And you can get really fancy with this and it respects parentheses and nested layouts. So, okay, here we have um, plot one and plot four. So this is plot one here and this is plot four together in a single row, which together make up the denominator, bottom part, whatever, of this arrangement here where plot two is above them and these two together are below. And then all of this makes up the right-hand side of a composition with plot three on the left. Um, and one thing that they noted in the um, in the chapter is that by it's it's going to just sort of automatically scale everything and, and align things. So the uh, edges of these plot regions, as you can see, are lined up, and the Y labels are at the same level. And I think in a different example, they showed that even if the um, text, the axis text, like and this is a bad example because here the Y axis labels have two digits, but if, even if one of these had like four digits or something, they would add white space to the other plot so that the Y axis labels would still be like in a single line. Um, so it makes some sort of smart choices under the hood. Um, so this is the part that blew my mind. <laughs> um, you can get really creative with your layouts. Um, and so in this example, they're using kind of a like metaphor for the layout. Like they've got A, I guess, is gonna correspond automatically to P1. I don't think there was any place where they defined that. I think it just understands the letters of the alphabet to mean like the first element. Um, I don't know whether this would work with lowercase letters. Do, do you guys happen to have tried that or no? Okay. So no, I, found, I found this is where I just got sort of confused and um, because, because the like the letters in the layout call or the layout object are like were not defined at all. So I was yeah. like, and then I just didn't, I didn't look into it. So I have no idea. <laughs> okay, let's actually, here, let me um, open yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, let's if we can like look at it, that would be good. Cause I did not either. I did not understand the AA, Steve. Yeah, hashtag I wish B, that like... they had given more um, ex like explanation of that. Okay, so here we are. This is the um, slides repo. Let me just hide my meeting controls. All right. What was the name of the slide I was just on? Layouts can get creative. Somehow I collapsed all these things by hitting some key and I don't know how to uncollapse them all. Um, all right, so I'm gonna look at plot layout documentation, add a layout specification. Uh, Complex layouts can be created with a design argument. Okay, so here they're doing it with numbers. Um, when using strings to define the design, number sign, hashtag, pound, whatever can be denote, used to denote empty areas. So, okay, let's try it. Let's, let's see if it'll still work with like one, one, two, Presumably it will. Three. Yeah, that works mm. fine. What yeah. about like A, A, B, C, B, C, D, D? Yeah, wow, that's super weird. What about something like this? <laughs> it still works. Mm. It still works, but it, it's different now, right? Like, oh, is it? Yeah. Whoops. I wonder. Oh, shoot. You're right. Yeah. What's up with that? It does letter, like, if, if it go, if the 
the sequence it calls goes letters first and then numbers. Maybe. No, but... um, wait, so if I replace these with four, actually, maybe let's use a simpler example. Let me replace these with one. Let's see if that gives us the same thing. That gives us the same thing. Okay. So what happens if we replace these with four? Mm. What? <laughs> it's, did it just switch the, no, it did something more complicated, didn't it? Cause this is I, one. That's one. And then I can't, I'm not sure if like the top left is what was four before or if it, I think it would be, okay, you know, it would be nice in this, um, this chapter I think would be better if the original plots that they show had like titles that said like, this is plot one, this is plot two, yeah. so that you could keep track of it. Um, okay, so maybe we'll suggest that. Yeah, so it did some, like, this is plot two and it put it over here for some reason. And then this is plot four and it, no, I think it plot, it put, they put this one here and it put this one here. I don't understand what that So means. I don't, I, I think what it does is it, it, mm -hmm. it goes through the alphabet sequentially first and then it goes through numbers sequentially, but I, because what it did is it put A in, or it put, no, now I'm confused. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why you- I don't know that. how it's making the association between like the letter uh -huh. the layout call and the actual num the object name of the plot. Right. I think it's just implicitly making that association. It's not assigned anywhere. Um, well, yeah, but but what I guess what it, what is confusing me is that if it's implicitly made, then it should matter. It shouldn't matter what you put in the layout object. It should only matter what order things are put in in the actual like plot call like p1 plus p2 plus p3 oh, like should go in, in order of that no matter what if it if the association is somehow implicit i don't know i'm confused right. <laughs> no i i think i got it i think i got it here so okay so this is like a box right mm -hmm. okay so i i was just while you while you were talking if, if this is already mentioned so see what it's it's so like the the pound or the hashtag is an empty space Mm -hmm. And so what you're doing is you're saying, take AA, make it like, make it like a three by three matrix. Yeah. And then in those two boxes, make it AA and then yeah. put B, BB mm -hmm. and then DD and then CC. So I think it's not only doing position, but it's also doing how many, how big of a size are you doing inside of this matrix? Yeah, that makes sense to me. The part that I don't understand is like, if we like, how are they deciding why do these lowercase letters mean these plots? And like, why can't we substitute a different index that's like the same? You know, why can't we do this, for example? Actually, maybe we, what happens if we do that? Yeah, the same weird thing happens here. So, like, if what they if know you... that this plot corresponds to, um, the... if they know that this plot, oh, wait. Did I just, did that work? Sorry, I'm getting confused. Yeah, that was the same. Oh, that was the same. What? Okay, what but is that? It's but it's when you replace something with a letter or a number. A number. And I don't know why you'd ever yeah. mix and match, but. Because really I think the good. index order of letters and numbers is somehow like messing with it. Yeah. Oh, it's because, yeah, okay. It's because numbers come first. So it's taking P4 associating it with a number which comes first in the index before a b c d and so it's switching it to go first and then it's going through the other ones in order i think maybe what would you do if go back to the example four four the c four four what was that four four and so that gives us the okay so that gives us the scatter plot, plot which one, like this this is plot one and it put it in the fourth position yeah. Whoa. So Ashley, you're saying like they went and took like any number. Wait, no, hang on. What? This is. No, maybe I. No, I'm... I can't get my head around this. 
anyway, um, I think what's happening is it's it's going in in index order, which will go like one, two, three, four, blah, 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 A, B, C, D. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's associating four, which will come first with P1. And then it goes A is equal to P2, B is equal to P3, C is equal to P2. Oh, I see. And then what it's doing is because we've specified the layout. Yeah. It's taking four, which is P1, and putting it at the end mm -hmm. because we've associated it with a okay. number <laughs> that's such a mess i wish that is where, it's really I messy i wonder if you could like like does layout the specifying the layout have to be done with like indices or could you like could you well, name like put strings in there i guess is my question i was or, i was just looking at that so in the examples there's a function called area so if you go down, there's like a helper function called area and they have kind of an example. And I was kind of looking at that and it kind of talks about this, Which about are... what numbers. So if you go down to the examples section of the docs. Just a little bit up. Up a little bit. Yeah. So you have yeah, these okay. like area. I see. So I think it has something to do with this because I think the numbers actually correspond so something with the grid because there's something in the, if you do like question mark area, which is a... Yeah which is a helper function in patchwork. It talks about like this area is, is equivalent to what we're doing with the A, A, B, B thing. So if you do like question mark area, yep, you're there. So like it, in the details section, it says like areas is equivalent to this. So I'm wondering if the numbers have something to do with not necessarily like order one, two, three with the plots, but the, like the positioning of the plots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a really interesting way to design a package. Like, whereas ggplot is based on a really specific, like, grammar. And I'm sure this is too. It's just not as clearly explained. And maybe if we went and looked at the docs, it would be. But what it feels like is somebody was like, all right, if I wanted to design a package where stuff kind of just works the way you vaguely want it to work so that you can like wave a wand and be like, I want it to kind of look like this. And then they went and did that. I, I mean, I actually think it's really cool um, because you don't have to go in your head and like do the calculations of like, okay, I want this to be this many units wide. It's sort of like um, when when recipes do proportions like you know two parts a to one part b where you can just scale it however um i think that's kind of that's kind of neat i'm gonna put this back to the capital letters just because that's how it was in the book mm. cool all right um let me go back to my slides I also just pulled up the like guide for layouts for patchwork um, and just dropped that in the chat. Oh, cool. Okay. Is that a separate? Oh, I see. That's a an article rather than a. Yeah. Yeah. It is accessible. Like if you do uh, like question mark patchwork, there's a link to it in the um, the help file as well. I see. Yeah. Okay. They say. Um, Oops, let me, let me also share this. I can't seem to find my, okay, I won't. I'll let you guys click on that link. But um, they, one of the things that they mention is, well, first of all, they call it a textual representation, which is mm -hmm. a, helpful, a helpful thing to call it. And also I would note that they, uh, they do exactly what I said they should do in the ggplot2 book where they, label that give each plot a title plot one plot two plot three plot four so you can mm -hmm. see where they are um i think yeah they should the ggplot2 book really should borrow from this one a little bit more um and then they tell us that it's our responsibility to make sure that the area is rectangular um so like it's just not going to work presumably if you give it something that doesn't actually that's another question what happens if i give it something that doesn't make sense like that. 
Will it just add empty space? Yeah, okay. Layout must be rectangular. It's not, not giving me the option to make it not. Cool. But if I add a space, then it's fine. Huh. Cool. What if you gave it like an asterisk or like a symbol that it wouldn't know? It's probably just going to error out, probably. Yeah. No, it doesn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, that that's... Uh... <laughs> Unless so, asterisk means something in this does. representation. What happens if we, okay, here's another question. What happens if we do this, do EE e instead of DD, back to our original conversation? It still understands that because it's just yeah. index order. Yeah, okay, so that supports our, our understanding of what's happening under the hood. Okay, um, I'm gonna go back to the slides for now. Um, I can find them. This is not the slides. This is the documentation, which I was also trying to find. Hang on. All right. Having a little trouble finding our slides here. Um, there we go. View, full screen, sharing. Thanks for your patience, everybody. Okay. Here we are. So we made our creative layout. Um, so yeah, one thing that we were probably noticing in here is that we have the same legend repeated over and over and over again, um, which is annoying. And so luckily Patchwork provides a an option to collect all of the same guide using guides equals collect. And interestingly, that's in the plot layout like function, which is not entirely intuitive for me. I mean, I guess it does sort of make sense because you're talking about where the guide is going to go. Um, but I would almost think of it as being sort of a broad feature of the plot itself that you would need to um, to do. And then I also didn't fully understand what was happening with this guide area. Oh, oh, I guess this is telling it where to put the guides. So it's like in place of plot of having a fourth plot, we have the area to put the guides. I guess that, yeah, that's what's happening here. But it notes that you only, um, it, it notes that you only collect, it will only collect guides that are exactly the same. So presumably if there was like a, a fourth level in one of the plots, but not the other one, um, it would not be able to collect those, which is a bit annoying. And I think there are ways that you can get around that. Um, but the way that I've done it in the past, because I didn't know that I could collect guides like this, is to just create plot one and plot two and plot three and then manually modify them above and like remove the legend from two of them, but not the third one, for instance, um, which actually I think brings, yeah, brings me nicely to the next point here which is that these are still understood as ggplot objects when, um, once they're put into the overall patchwork object. So here they're combining plot one and plot two to make an object called plot one, two. And then you can go in and modify it. So I guess plot one, two is kind of an, an, like a list type object. It's got a first part and a second part where the first part is plot one and the second part is plot two. And so here they are, showing that you can replace the first element of plot one, two with a modified version of the first element of plot one, two. Um, and here they're using the plus theme light. Um, this plus is now used in like the ggplot2 context where it's just adding a layer to a plot. So this only works because this thing is itself a ggplot2 object that we can modify in this way. Did this part make sense to you guys? The only question that I have is like P12, like when we're adding these together, well, I guess, I guess a ggplot2 object is just a list of yeah. information, right? So that's what I was kind of wondering was I'm guessing this object is like P12 is of class list probably or type list. And so that's all the subsetting is doing is it's just saying subset out this item from the list attach this theme onto it and then reassign it. Yeah, presumably. Um, so we can investigate that a bit. 
uh, if I can open up my code chunks. So we make P12, and then if we look at um, class P12, it's a patchwork, it's a GG, GG plot, structure of P12, um, a patchwork. God, what if you do type of, like do type of P12? Type of P12, yeah, it is a list. list. It's a list. Let's look at the structure a little more. Oh, hmm. interesting. It's not gonna tell me more. It's not gonna tell me anything more about the structure of this. Um, what about structure of P121? Oh yeah, okay, there we go. There's our ggplot object list. So yeah, P12 um, dollar sign, huh? Oh, P121 dollar sign. Yeah, okay, so then theme is currently empty, but then if we do plus theme light, um, then we've added light, yeah. Mm. Cool. So presumably we could also do, we could change this to just being P1 like that, but that wouldn't uh, illustrate the point that they're trying to make, which is that you can literally modify the um, the element itself. Um, all right. Okay. Um, okay, so then speaking of themes, um, this and operator is what I always forget about. So I would intuitively think that your patchwork object would also be a ggplot2 object that you could then keep using the plus on to add a theme, for example. But that's not true because they've appropriated the plus to put plots next to each other, um, which irritates me a little bit. I think it would be Nice if they had chosen a different operator, but whatever. So instead we have this and if you wanna effectively add more ggplot2 layers to the entire conglomerate of the plots that you've created instead of just modifying one of them. Um, so here they are using scale y continuous on both of the plots at the same time. Um, and also applying theme minimal to both of the plots at the same time. And they do that with and between all the layers taking the place of the plus. Um, I don't know what would happen if you tried to do plus. I think it either would give an error or it just simply wouldn't work. I know I've tried that before and it hasn't worked and I've been frustrated. So and is the way to go, I guess. Yeah, the only thing that I was kind of thrown off, I mean, I agree with the and part of it, um, but like, my other question was like, you have theme set, right? So ggplot2 makes theme set available. So you can just like set that at the top of your file okay. and all of those theming elements get inherited by all of your plots. Mm -hmm. So I thought this was a little redundant if you use that, but I, I was trying to figure out, and I should look into this, is if you do use theme set, does patchwork still inherit those themes? They should. Yeah, I would think in so. In my mind, but I'm not sure if it does that, so. I've never used theme set. Um, it seems less reproducible because then the code, the theming is really far away from the code, but I could see how it would work if you had like a report or something where yeah. you want all the plots to match. Um, we can go, let's see, do we have time? Yeah, we have plenty of time. We can go try it. Um, yeah, if you had a report or maybe if you just like did it, if you had a, um, although I guess it kind of, does the same thing where it keeps it far away. But if you had like a, I don't know, like a quarto sure. uh, thing online or something like that, I don't know. Okay, so what if I go up to, does anyone know the shortcut to expand all these chunks? This is so frustrating. If you go up into the I... ribbon, let me let me fault my studio here. I mean, at this point- Yeah, I, I can open. explore. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember I, I was like trying to insert a new code chunk and I hit the wrong key by accident, but then I couldn't figure out what I had typed. Um, okay, so. 
All right, so that's fine. So let me just add, um, is it theme set like this? Uh, theme underscore set, yeah. And you can just pass like theme underscore BW or theme gray or whatever. And then that, like all the plots that follow should inherit that theme. You'll have to do the full function, me, like open do, code. Let me do like- Do something like crazy, like I'll theme dark, yeah. Do I need parentheses after it like that? Yep. Okay. Um. Cool. So let me knit this entire thing and we'll see what happens. Because presumably now everything should be dark unless we've explicitly set the theme otherwise. Mm -hmm. Ah, all right. So, yep, this is still fine. Um, these are all dark. And yeah, here we changed this one to theme light explicitly. And then here we added theme. Yeah, okay. So it looks like this works as expected, which is nice. Um, for the expanding, um, the collapse all function is option shift O, which is probably what you hit. And then it's uh, option shift O is to open all of them. Yeah, I guess I was going for. You're probably going for and shift I. And shift, yeah. Oh, okay. Good to know. Thank mm. you. <laughs> All right. Um, you know what? I'm just gonna do. I'm gonna stop sharing the slides. I'm just gonna do the slides in here because that's easier. Um, I don't have to keep toggling back and forth. So got rid of the dark theme. Um, where were we? Plot annotations, which should have been a, its own slide. Whoops, my bad. Um, Yeah, okay, so um, we had, earlier we had the plot underscore layout function, and now we have the plot underscore annotation function, which lets us add um, title, caption, levels, et cetera. Um, presumably you could also do, add like a GG title. I didn't try this, but now I'm wondering. Let's check. Um, so, what if instead, what if instead I do P1, P2, and GG title? So it's very text. Yeah, so that also, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <Wow. laughs> Interesting. Okay, right. So that illustrates the distinction. Um, Parentheses are not working as expected, or they weren't working as expected. But here, so the and here adds like a, it modifies each element, just like when we added theme light or whatever, that was applied to each underlying element of the, um, of the patchwork. So that's what's happening here. And if we remove the parentheses, then it's treating it as though we had something like this, which is not how I would expect order of operations to go here, but apparently it is. So yeah, the, so the plot annotations is if we actually wanna add literally a plot level, um, like a, a not a plot level, a patchwork level title um, or caption or anything like that. That's good to know. So they also introduce um, tag levels, which we will see more shortly. Um, and they also have, they tell it that we want um, theme gray. Um, sorry, this is, a, this is a separate and item. So this is all under plot annotation, but then theme gray, base family equals mono, changes our font to mono space. Um, and then the tag levels adds these labels for the individual elements of the plot. And we'll see in a minute that we can change those quite a bit. But here we've got our caption. Um, okay, so labeling plots. Um, I got confused by one of the examples they had here. So I 
did a little test. Um, they, in plot layout under tag level, they had these options new and keep. Actually, before I talk about this, first, let me just clarify. Here, it's probably clear to you guys, but just to make sure, here they did tag levels equals uppercase I, which means it's going to do Roman numerals. If we had done like lowercase I, then it would do lowercase Roman numerals. If we had done uppercase A, it would do uppercase letters, sort of similar to the semantic um, layout thing that they had going on earlier with the text grid. Um, okay. And oh, and they also showed that you could put a vector, like you could have upper tag levels equals C parentheses, uppercase I comma lowercase I, if you had multiple levels of plots that you needed to label and you wanted the top level to be the big Roman numerals and the bottom level to be the small Roman numerals. Um, but then I got confused because I saw in one place in the book, they had like tag level equals new. And I didn't understand what was going on there. Um, so I went and played around with it. And basically I created two versions of the original plot, P34, and called one of them new because I was then gonna modify it with the new option and then called one of them keep. And then for both of them, I um, modified the second element. This is just following the text in the book to either use tag level equals new or tag level equals keep. So tag level equals new here. Um, what was the original P34? Let's go back and remind ourselves what the original P34 was. Okay, so this is P34. This is what it looks like. Monospace font, tag levels with big Roman numerals. And then the only change here with tag level equals new is that there is no tag on the second plot, which is the one we modified. I don't know why. Whereas with keep, we kept it. Does anyone understand what tag level equals new is doing here? Because I still don't. Uh, can you go back up to the function? Maybe if I can look at the, let's see, it was plot layout, right? So let's see, see if the docs have something. We're looking at tag level. Indicate how auto tagging should behave. C plot annotation. Okay, so we get pushed to another <laughs> function. Um, Tag levels. Our case. When the plot contains nested layouts, the tag level argument in the nested plot layout will define whether enumeration should continue as usual or add a new level. The format of the levels are defined with tag levels. Okay. So. Oh, do you have to give it a new tag level start? So like here in the bottom, it has the C equals A1. So if you want to give a new one, you have to pass like a vector of whatever your next level will start at. I see. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So tag level equals new here. They're just applying that to this like denominator portion of the plot. So I think basically what it's saying is treat this as one thing and then treat this as a new type of level. And then we're going to have like an A. Are we going to have an A and then a one or are we going to have an A and then a one, two? Let's see what this gives. Oh, it adds a level. Oh, hmm. Um, so we still have our A, B tag levels, but then we also add a second sub level, which is the one, this is the kind of thing that I know I'm not going to memorize. I'm just going to fiddle with it until I get it every time. But 
it's good to know that this exists because it controls the behavior. I think mm -hmm. if we just did something like, this also highlights that if we, if we just did like this without specifying, then we're gonna end up with, oh, never mind. I clearly don't know what I'm doing. Um, I think when you do that, it probably it doesn't know to do the levels at all, right? I thought it was going to do A1. Or, yeah, I think you're right. It doesn't know. What happens if we give it, like, the right number of elements but make them not be automatic? No, it doesn't. It just follows the first one. Yeah, there's also like the small detail that in plot layout, it's tag level and in oh. plot annotation, it's tag levels. Oh, that's my plot bad. I meant when... if I do this. Oh, yeah, that has to be. Oh, OK, so this can only be keeper new. Mm -hmm. ah, OK, this is confusing. Yeah, I think the documentation is confusing because they're actually doing different things and it tells you to see plot annotation, but you're, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Where does it describe what he even knew or actually like doing? It like kind of tells you, but it doesn't really tell you. And it, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's not like explicit. Yep. Okay. Um, well, why don't we go on and see what we get to? So keep a new is a thing that we should know about. Um, I think that's pretty much as far as it's gonna get into my head is like, remember that if you wanna do weird nesty things, you're gonna need keep a new and you're gonna need to play around with them. Um, okay, so here's when they have different Oh, this is what I was trying to do. So P34 plus plot annotation, tag levels equals concatenate IA. Um, wait, except this doesn't do anything. <laughs> Maybe that's for the second level. Why is this example here then? That's my bad. All right, I don't know. Moving on, um, arranging plots on top of each other. So we might not want to put them next to each other. We might want to put them literally on top of each other. Um, you can use general options, left, right, top, and bottom to put the plots on top of each other. But you can also be really specific with um, this grid, uh, the grid package, the unit function. Um, they talk about NPC units. I didn't know what that stood for, so I looked it up. It stands for <laughs> normalized parent coordinates. So it's like coordinates relative to the panel area. By default, you can change it to being the plot area if you want. Um, and so it's going to be proportions ranging from zero to one, or presumably zero, depending on which axis you're in, it's going to go like left to right or bottom to top. I'm actually not sure if it goes bottom to top or top to bottom, probably bottom to top. Um, Location is relative to the panel area, not the plot area. Confusingly, they also have an option for full. They have like an option for panel, an option for plot, and an option for full in Align 2. And I'm not exactly sure the difference between panel area and full area. It might be like full is the entire patchwork, but they don't explain that very well. So we can also play around with that. So here's an example. We use the function inset element to add an inset. So now instead of P1 plus P2, we have P1 plus the inset of P2. And we specify, we can specify exact um, units here with left and bottom. Um, and then we can also specify units in, we can also specify um, the position in other units. So in this case, we would like it to be 15 millimeters down from the top, or sorry, 15 millimeters in from the right boundary. So here, this is unit parentheses one comma NPC is telling us we're dealing with the absolute rightmost edge. 
and then subtracting 15 millimeters from that. And then we're doing the same here. So this is gonna be 15 millimeters down from the top. And here it's aligned to full. This is the example they gave. So again, not really sure what full is doing here and why that's different from panel in this case. But again, we have this plot, which is now exactly 15 millimeters from um, the top and from the right. And obviously the, uh, whether you specify this sort of thing in millimeters or you know in some absolute unit versus in a MPC unit, which is like a proportion is gonna affect things for when you save your plot um, in different sizes. Um, here's another example with collecting those guides that we had before. So here we are adding, um, we're, we're creating a composite plot with P2 and P4, collecting the guides using guides equals collect. And then we're using that as our inset element. And here, instead of doing any fancy thing with the uh, millimeters, they are just using these NPC units to tell it how much to inset. What I like about this too is that you can explicitly say left equals 0 0.5, bottom equals, et cetera, because I don't like having to remember which order, like is it left, bottom, right, top, or like left, right, top, bottom, or which, where do we go counterclockwise? So here we can just specify, you can do them in any order. Um, plot annotation, so tag levels A. So again, here, if we had wanted to do more complicated tags where like, this is A and then the inset is B1, 2 or something like B1, B2. We would have had to use the um, tag levels new option, I think. Um, okay, and actually before, instead of going on to the other plots, let's, um, what's the thing that I, oh yeah, let's experiment with the inset because I would like to know about this full option versus panel and plot. Okay. So here's an example. Here's our example that we saw before. And if instead we do align to plot, it seems to be a little farther in. If we do a line to panel, it's not noticeably different. This is probably a bad example. So what if instead we make a complicated arrangement? So let's do P1. This is what I was going to suggest. <laughs> it's going to look so stupid. P3, P4. And then we're gonna inset P P two for some reason. I don't know why we would ever do this. <laughs> cool. Yikes. Aureus, <laughs> love it. <laughs> Publication ready. Oh wait, um, <laughs> this is here. Let's do it relative to everything. Wait, it's still so white. <laughs> what the heck? Um, why is this behaving this way. Oh, because 15 <laughs> millimeters must be. All right, well, this is with a line to full. What happens if we do a line to plot instead? It looks the same. What happens if we no, do it's, it's different. It's different? Yeah. Should we should we do an arrangement of all three different options? Is that even possible? Uh... <laughs> Wait, why don't I make it here? Let me make it simpler. What if we do P1? What if we do just a bunch of P1s? Mm. Does that make sense? Why is the legend so weird? What did I, what? Yeah, that I don't know. Okay, wait, what if we just, what is P2? P2 is supposed to look like that. <laughs> Why does this look so bad? <laughs> it's um, so tiny. Okay, interesting. Um, that's a line to plot. If we do a line to panel instead, is that the same or different? Okay, I'm gonna take your advice. 
plot. It's gonna be horrendous. Oh my god, it's gonna be so beautiful. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> I um, uh, uh, no, it's because we have oh, it's because we have the inset on each of them too. I think we want no, no. I'm I'm gonna add titles so we can see more clearly. So, uh, <laughs> plus plot annotation, right? Title equals plot. Good grief. What the heck? I don't know what this is doing. Um, at all. Why is the legend hmm. just hanging out there? <laughs> and um, I'm pretty sure the, the actual graph itself is like upside down. Oh, you're right, it is. Oh, that's because of the weird... Okay, you know what? We are overcomplicating this. Hold we on. We are definitely doing that. Mm -hmm. Let's. It's kind of fun though. Let's do right equals zero point four. Top equals zero point four. Because I think the millimeters thing is really throwing this off. Mm, yeah. Well, uh, nope. Still, still weird. Hmm. What if we just look at plot? Why are we like this? I feel like this might have to be like homework. <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to leave this. I'm going to remove this monstrosity from the slides. We are all confused about our insets and the difference between the different align to arguments. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's looks like we even have this problem. <laughs> what happens if we do this? This should do something normal, hopefully. Yeah, oh, what? I don't hmm. know why that gets turned upside down and why the legend gets separated from it. That's no, there's something like really weird going on. Okay. All right. Because, well, because it should be like, it, it should be like going from like just the left and right. It should be, oh, maybe it's because we're making it take up a really small amount of space. Because if it's going from 40% on the left to 40% on the right, yeah, but that Only still leaves twenty percent for it to fill. Mm -hmm. But I think it might be filling twenty percent, and then the legend has to be. So try, try changing the point fours to point twos, maybe. Okay. I would just expect it to be centered and really tiny. Uh, what? Okay, nope. Mm -mm. Don't know. What? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Is is it something to do with the align too? It nope. Literally doesn't change anything. This thing is haunted. I'm so confused. That one I think mm. moved. It but... moved slightly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> Our challenge for next week is to make a reproducible example <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Um, well, we don't have very much time left. <laughs> I'm gonna just call this done. Um, I'm gonna put it back how it was. Cool. So, um, yeah, in conclusion, patchwork is magical and it's sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. Where were we? I think. Yeah. So, OK, somebody else put these slides in and I didn't take the time to like learn these other packages. So I'm not going to like go through these in detail. I think the the point here is that these other packages, Grid Extra, um, and cowplot like provide ways to also do this. 
how plot more explicitly allows you to align things horizontally or vertically um, tells you basically how to match up the edges. GG draw, I don't know what these things are, um, but take away, you can use other methods if you want. All right, cool. I'm gonna call this, I think we can stop here. Um, Am I supposed to type stop or end, or does it not matter? Uh, stop. Okay. I think it's